Hi all and welcome to today's video. On today's video I wanted to go back to a project I worked on a couple of years ago now and it's a project that I'd been working on um, for quite a few years all the way up until that point. Now the project was to create a solar trap and a solar trap is basically a contraption that harnesses the power of the sun and stores it into a battery. Um, so it's a very basic solar device um, and the idea of this solar device was to make it completely portable so you, basically you could in theory be homeless and have one of these devices on you and you'd have a power support uh, a power supply for devices such as a phone or a laptop if you needed it but you could also use it to power other things as well of course and one of the uses that I wanted to use it for was to power my DJI Mavic Enterprise. Um, so it's a power hungry little drone and obviously it consumes batteries, um, one every half an hour basically if you're consistently flying this thing. And say if you're out camping or um, going for a drive and setting up on the beach um, one afternoon and you wanted to use your drone for more than a couple of flights and you only had the one battery, then this contraption would actually get yourself out of that sticky spot where you have to go back home and actually charge your batteries back up again. So here you can see me running through the components of it. It's pretty basic. The solar panel's on the front of the hard box and goes through the wall there to the charge controller that you can see here. So it's a 12 volt, eight amp charge controller. And then from the charge controller back to these boards here, these bars, and the bars basically just separated into a positive and to a negative. From there, I've actually also included a Bluetooth monitoring device. So I can actually just connect to this solar trap from my phone and actually relay the information about how, how much power is actually in the device itself. I can also monitor how long it takes to charge the device as well, which is handy. You can see here as well, from those bars, basically it runs back from a 12 volt power supply to the 240 volt inverter. So that's actually a 240 volt inverter. And for those who are unaware, basically a 240 volt inverter inverts the power supply from 12 volt up to 240 volts. So the sticker above that was incorrect. It, I used to have a 400 watt inverter, a watt inverter in the device. And I've since actually removed that and put the larger 700 watt inverter in there. You can draw a fair bit from this machine. So basically, I could draw um, up to 700 watts of power. You're not going to be able to use a kettle off this device or anything like that. Um, they're only for low power devices such as your, your phones and drones, all lithium technologies. Um, they run real, you know, run LED lights really well and stuff like that small 12 volt fans you can definitely run something like that off a device such as this here you can actually see where i've got my drone set up so it's all cushioned it's completely supported um, by the cushioning itself and then the drone box is just slipped into one corner of it now this setup that you're actually seeing there in the corner the drone setup was supplied to me by rise above um, it's basically a drone company in australia and they put together these awesome kits um, hard box kits where you could carry around your drone and all the components you'd need to actually use it. So I took it one step further and yeah, created a drone charger. So it's just a portable drone charger or a solar trap as I call it. You can see here it's got a handle on it so you can actually pull it around. Um, it makes it for much easier um, dragging it around the backyard and stuff like that. If you've um, out camping for example, you can set it up against a wall so that you can angle it towards the sun as well, which is pretty convenient. Um, and the beauty of these hard cases is they're extremely durable, um, which is why I went in this direction. I have done up to 13 different concepts of this, and I, I started out by actually attaching everything just to a battery itself. Um, so it was extremely primitive and basic back in the day. 
and I quickly learned from my mistakes. And some of the mistakes that I found was weathering um, was a big issue. In fact, weathering was the biggest issue I experienced in the development of these prototypes. So once again, this is only a prototype. Um, it's still rough. Um, everything's wired together in there to basically just to get it to work. Um, there's definitely more professional ways to do an installation such as this. Um, but the idea is, is to fight against the elements. So it's a hard case and it's designed to withstand the elements. So you can leave this out in the rain and you won't have any problems. You can come back the next morning. In fact, I leave this outside consistently. It's been outside since I built it. It doesn't get stored away in, in a shed or anything like that. There's no point in that. Part of the reason I designed these concepts is so that if I ever needed a power supply, a 240 volt power supply in the house, I could just go into the backyard, bring one of these units inside, and yes, I have more than one unit of them, and instantly I'll have a 240 volt power supply. Now, do I need to maintain these machines? Absolutely, yeah, it's a contraption. It has batteries and components in it that need to be checked every now and then, and I do indeed check them. Um, the batteries are the biggest thing. So the battery is probably the biggest hurdle that I've faced um, with a device such as this. And I've actually gone as far as trying to design and make my own batteries so I can better understand how they work and how I could perhaps make a solar trap such as this and then connect it to a battery of my own making um, so that if I ever needed to and I didn't have a battery on hand, I could, in theory, develop my own battery um, to use with this system. And because it's compartmentalized, each component can actually be pulled out and replaced and removed by the user themselves. That's the idea of it. You don't need to be an electrician to understand how something like this actually, actually works. It's just a matter of using the product itself um, and getting an understanding of it. And I remember the first time I went into the solar, um, I found basically a panel and a couple of batteries and what looked like to be an inverter in a back shed I was renting. And I didn't understand it at all. In fact, I remember contacting um, electricians, for example, and they were qualified electricians and they didn't understand it either. They couldn't even help me assemble this solar device so I had to learn it all myself I basically went online and I learned what the different components were and eventually um, I understood it enough where I could put the system together um, solar is all about balancing the system so that you want to be able to make sure that whatever the size panel is is suitable to the size of the battery that you have but you also want to make sure that your charge controller is relative to the size of your panel and the battery itself um, and then your inverter is how much power will it consume? Um, so basically, uh, a car battery, a standard car battery is between 800 and 1200 watts. Um, so basically, if you had a device like a kettle, a kettle is 2400 watts. Basically, if you had a big enough inverter, and you need a big inverter, you need a 3000 watt inverter at least to run a kettle, you would consume an entire car battery in half an hour of running a kettle. That's how massively energy intensive a kettle is. And actually learning um, this process has taught me an incredible amount in regards to the details of just how power consumption works and how power hungry some of the devices are in a house. Microwaves, for example, are massively energy intensive um, and so are um, yeah, your toasters and your kettles and that as well. Um, so you can see there, basically, I'm just showing off the device to show you how convenient it is. Um, basically, you can launch a drone off the top of it if you want, um, although I wouldn't recommend trying to land it on top of the, the box itself. It's a little bit more tricky. Um, here, basically, I just include a little bit of drone footage. Um, absolutely glorious day here in Queensland, as per usual. In fact, it's one of the better ones. Normally it's quite windy in these parts and today it was actually very stable conditions for once. The ocean has just been absolutely spectacular. Now, one of the other reasons I made this device to be compartmentalized is purely because 
if you go ahead and you could design a system like this onto a single circuit board but then none of the components can be replaced um, basically if i was to go into selling these devices the solar traps i could actually um have electricians auto electricians from around the country do the repairs on them so an auto electrician would have all the skills required to actually repair something like this and because of that reason you don't have to send it back to a technician center to have someone look at it or a customer service center basically you could have a set of instructions in this device and just send it directly um, to an auto electrician a local auto elect and they'd be able to fix the device um, you could put bigger batteries in these as well. I have a, I believe it's a 12 amp hour battery in this at the moment. Um, this, this test here is purely to show you the loading. So it's 13.42 um, volts in that system at the moment, which is an indication that the battery itself is actually fully charged. And then I wanted to actually go ahead and put my drone battery on charge and put the controller on charge as well. The controllers are notorious for going flat. So um, one of the first things you'll find as a drone operator is there's always a need to charge your battery and there's always a need to charge your controller. And generally, as, these, as this equipment gets older, it's a need that happens more and more often. In fact, pretty much every time I use the drone, immediately that main battery for the drone has to be charged. Of course, it gets consumed very quickly but the controller is just not aging very well at all, the battery. And every time I use it, I have to go ahead and put it on. So you can see there, 12.42, um, so it's knocked a volt out of it, basically. Basically, that's just an indication that the system is under load. It's not like it's consumed any more battery or anything like that. It's just the system being under load. Um, pretty much if you watch it from that point onwards, 12.38, uh, 12.37, it will slowly draw down on the system and that's actually consuming the battery power itself now i wanted to time this as well just to give everyone an indication that it's no slower than plugging it into 240 volt power or anything like that and i did originally capture the time and stuff like that as well um, but over the progress of the day um, i failed to actually keep track of it um, precisely that is i knew roughly what it took it was actually about an hour and 15 minutes to fully charge that drone battery up so you can see there that's the ps series the 12 volt 12 amp hour battery that i'm using in there originally i used to use smaller ones so seven amp hour and a seven amp hour battery would definitely be enough to get the job done and that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed having a look at my solar trap my contraption my gizmo if you will um if you got anything out of this feel free to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Um, I appreciate all the subscribers I can get. And until next time, thanks again for watching. Cheers. Bye.